Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here. And Forbes is back with another article. SEC, Assault on Ripple provokes wider debate. This article to me was really interesting and really acknowledging as whenever there's articles on Forbes, they... They, 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 you know, they, they usually get quite a lot of views, and especially from people who are not necessarily in the field of XRP necessarily, but maybe just wanting to read something about what the SEC has been doing. And this title, I think it provokes some of the people, and it, you know, it gives some notice out there. So I, I definitely like it. Now, the article itself, you might debate about how good it is. I mean, it goes over the entire lawsuit in just a couple of different steps, and it also explains how it's really confusing exactly how these cryptocurrency rules work in the bigger comparison of Howie and also ends it off with explaining how a ripple test could be coming but from the get-go the title I guess you know I guess, I guess it's kind of good you know of course it doesn't have all the details that most people that are up to date with the day to day, you know, have or, or might want to know about, but it's good for introducing people to this debate. And it really is the truth, though, because the SEC, as it currently stands, has basically assaulted Ripple. Um, we cannot prove that just quite yet until this lawsuit is over. And again, remind you that a settlement could come at any time, but as it currently stands, we're all just thinking that the SEC really had no basis to put this lawsuit forward, yet they still did it anyway. And the last part, of course, is also true. It provoked a wider debate as right now the question should be, how exactly will cryptocurrencies be valued and will there be a grace period where a, uh, like, I'm not even going to go too far into this, but basically, will there be a grace period where cryptos can develop themselves away from the foundation which made it, where decentralization can be formed? Like Ethereum had, like Bitcoin had, and like XRP had. The first couple of years of XRP were quite centralized. Eventually, they moved away from that. Same thing for any other platform out there. And the question again is, is how long is that grace period is going to be? And will that count for every crypto or only at this current point for Bitcoin and Ether? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. But I love these types of articles that get posted on Forbes and whatnot. It just, it just makes the debate a little bit bigger and gets people in who wouldn't normally be interested in it. Make sure you understand as well, this Ripple lawsuit is the key to every single piece of crypto regulation in the United States going forward. Because some of the questions being battled, like I just described it to you, what type of grace period there will be, if the SEC gave fair notice and if they actually have to, and the deposition of Will Hinman, or William Hinman, all those parts are essential to knowing how cryptos will be regulated in the future. Every single part of this lawsuit could be a key to it, and that's something you should understand. Right now, it's mostly XRP holders that care about it, but as time moves on, as people understand that Ethereum really isn't that certain as they think right now, more and more people will also care about the Ripple and about the result, as if this result is negative, guys, crypto is going to fall into a really deep hole for a little while, um, and I might literally sell some crypto to buy back cheaper purely because of all of that, because it's not going to be a fun time for a little bit. Uh, crypto calculations are necessary and they will happen regardless, but the first moment it happens might not be that nice, might not be that fun as people get extremely scared and they might be severe, again, from the get-go, which will fix itself though in due time. So I'm not too worried about it, maybe short term though, if it does, again, give a negative result. But I, I think we'll win, guys. I think everything is still looking good. And again, a settlement could come at any time. Again, the SC could even now think, you know what, we don't want William Himmer to be questioned, we just want to settle before that gets going. It could even be that way. Make sure you remember that. Now, Stephen Cohen's $22 billion hedge fund gearing up to storm the crypto space. We've seen quite a lot of institutional investments, investors, and billionaires just enter the space over the last couple of months, and it's really interesting to me how not more people are talking about this. Yesterday, I think we covered how 650 billion banks, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's a lot, 650 banks, or it was $650 billion worth I'm not exactly sure which of the two anymore, but I believe just all the banks in Germany were going to be allowed to start buying crypto from this point on forward. Of course, we saw Coinbase get the custody license a little bit earlier, but basically crypto becoming a lot more accessible in Germany is a really big deal, and it's starting to really get the ball going right now. I've called a couple of times the snowball effect. We've been calling it out since 2017, where once some institutions adapted and start saying the, the plus sign or the thumbs up, 
others will do so too. And the same thing for billionaires. At first, many people will be hesitant and hating towards it because you don't want to be first to maybe expose yourself to something so potentially harmful and risky. As with Bitcoin, it could have been that they really got nowhere. If you were supporting it at, you know, $1,000 or so, people put their money in and it went back to 100 people would think you're an idiot. So right now that it's gone to 64000 and you support it, even though it might go back to the ground right now, since there's so many others supporting it, so many big institutions, so many big banks, you're never an idiot anymore for supporting it too. And even Warren Buffett will tell you, well, it might have been a dumb decision to buy because it's so volatile and based upon quote unquote nothing. Again, debatable, but all right. You, you still had a pretty high probability of winning or at least you were there in the same boat as millions of others and huge institutional investors and guys with 20, 30, 50, 80 years, I don't freaking know how long, in the game already. All right, bulls and bears fight over $34,000 Bitcoin price as $445 million option expiry is looming. Bitcoin bears could take a $31 million lead if Bitcoin falls below $33,000 by Friday's option expiry. So that was today. I believe right now it's already Saturday for me. Yes, it is. It's already 1.20 a.m. Let me quickly see actually on live coin watch what the prices are looking at right now. Might actually be fun to quickly take a look at. Right now we are at 33.7 thousand. And so the conclusion is, well, they most likely didn't actually get their money. So the whole gist of the story is actually... People buy these options and the consequences are determined basically by where the price is at once they end. In this specific case here, um, the majority of the negative money actually did not get granted, so to speak. And also, I cannot actually tell you whether or not the quote unquote negative money or these options expires at all have any real effect on the price. It's just speculation as of this point because nobody can really prove that on those days or in anticipation of those days, the price goes down. Even then, like I just said, it could be in anticipation. It could be on the day itself. It could be so many different parts that it's it's so difficult to exactly um, analyze how that works. Some people have put up some different mechanics to show that it does. And I always like to debate that saying, well, but that could have been a ton of different things, which there always is. Halfings, for example, you can a little bit more accurately see what those do because with these open op options, there's so many of them so often, so many different sizes, even though the effects are kind of the same. It's, it's really hard, guys. It's really hard to measure. And so let's not go too far into that. Let's just look at it and, and you know, remind ourselves that these options are there and kind of think about it. For example, if we went below 33,000, okay, there would have been a, a lot of negativity. But since it didn't, well, I mean, nobody cares because it's more bullish, but nothing really too significant. It's just the normal pace of things still. Now, over 4,000 German institutional investment funds with $2 trillion in assets would now be eligible to invest up to 20% in Bitcoin. This is what I just went over, guys. Uh, $2 trillion, apparently 650 banks and a ton of other players over in Germany. Former Bitcoin bull now predicts crash to 10K. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Interesting. During a recent interview with Stansbury Research, Clem Chambers, CEO of Adven, forecasted that Bitcoin could crash to 10K. Chambers explained that the top crypto constantly repeats the same pattern based on its quadrennial halving event. It goes up like a rock and it comes down like a rock. It's the same cycle. It's the same audience. It's the same driver. And therefore, it's the same pattern. Extremely dumb statement, in my opinion, um, because first of all, even though something might happen one, two, three, four, five times, doesn't mean it will happen a sixth. Something you should really understand. Same thing. It's never the same exact cycle. It's always something akin to that. Not the same audience at all. We all know that crypto's audience has changed drastically over the last couple of months. I mean, just take a look at the Dogecoin buyers. You can't say it's the same audience anymore. Crypto has changed from, I don't want to kind of call people out, but I guess from computer nerds and people who really know their stuff to people who are doing some fun and giggle stuff that were also kind of, you know, computer savvy back in 2000, let's say um, 12 to 4, 15, whatever. Then in 2016, and then I guess start of 17, a lot of people were just kind of stumbling upon it by luck and accident. And then from 17 on forward, I guess it kind of, you know, changed its way again towards more traditional and mainstream and then in 2020 and 2021 it really started to hit mainstream and the memers and just kids and everything just everybody was starting to hit at that point so the audience has definitely changed over this while and i i want to kind of you know already stop his whole thought process there where it's like you can always say oh yeah if if this were to repeat itself bitcoin's gonna go to seven and five thousand ten thousand same thing for xrp you can always say oh if it's gonna repeat it's gonna go there 
but you don't really know at the end of things. So I think that's just fun to make you afraid and kind of kind of put a prediction in there for in case of why. Well, let me think about it like this. If I make a video right now saying, here's why XRP could crash to seven cents and it doesn't, nobody cares because if it didn't crash, people are generally happy. However, if it does crash towards that area and I did tell you guys about it, well, then I'm a freaking genius, right? Because people I can just always say like, uh, I warned you guys for a crash. Hopefully you sold and blah, blah. It's, always, it's this fake mentality of people trying to kind of spot the downfall because if they uh, say, oh, Bitcoin is going to go here to that point, that point, that point, it's, it's less of, a, of, a, of, a, of an achievement. You saying the price is going to go up, that's the bias we almost all have inherently anyway. So you saying it's going to go down is contrarian. So if it happens, you're more recognizable. You're uh, going to get more fame. You're going to get more credits and respect, basically. And if you were, quote, unquote, wrong, you, you can never really point out that you were actually wrong. And if you, uh, people can't really point out you were actually wrong because you can always say, well, this is if the pattern were to repeat, but it didn't, which is amazing, right? You can always spin it off as like a, a coincidence and that it's better that it didn't. So yeah, it's, 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 if you want to get fame and you want to be, quote, unquote, right, it's almost always better to call it for a bear cycle. Uh, but again, I don't really work that way. We just call out exactly what we think is going to happen. No BS and like that. And by the way, guys, over on Bybit, which is the platform I use to trade um, with leverage, by the way, look at how many new pairs there are, guys. It's pretty crazy. That's a lot of that's a lot of freaking pairs. Holy smokes. Even a BNB now in the midst of things. So yeah, just want to quickly point that out. The platform I'm trading on, it has a lot of new pairs. And that's one thing. Oh, look at my trade, by the way, guys. This is the trade we opened a long time ago from $800 in profit to freaking $400 almost in loss. And I'm still holding it open. Why? Because the liquidation point is 47 cents. And we're not selling it because it's a YouTuber. We open it together and we're riding it until the bitter end. Either I get liquidated or buy more or whatever. I'll tell you guys, though. I could actually buy a little bit more right now, um, to be honest with you, to actually make my position just a little bit better. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might actually have to do that. That that might be smart. Because I told you guys I actually wanted to buy at 50 cents, but since this is an account that I don't use too often, I forgot about it. However, since the price is actually coming back down over the last couple of days here, I might just pick... Should I do... Maybe I should do that right now as we... Uh, so I am on 2.5... How much should we buy? We can just buy, for example, let's just do, uh, I don't know, how much is good? Let's do just 250 XRP just for the for the fun of it. That's $65. Let's do a little bit more. 